Driving near the Serpent Mountain, you start to get an idea of why the mound was put here. It's because they would have thought the serpent had carved out these hills. And this is a ritual landscape. It's got strange valleys between these hillocks. I think there's a lot more carvings here everywhere, all around us. These are all ancient carvings. So, on our way to the mound, there's a good view from most hilltops and that's another sacred aspect of, of this whole area and you see that everywhere, you see those mountains in the distance I'm predicting that the, the Serpentine Hill will be on top of a high hill it'll be at least 50 feet tall above the surrounding countryside and from the top I'm predicting there will be a really good view although people never really talk about that the only sort of thing you see is basically an overhead view of the mountain because that's the only way to see it if you if you see the whole thing and the fact that it's going to be i just know it's going to be on top of a big hill yes this is the amish okay this is awesome so we'll slow down for me. and i know there's going to be an awesome view because it's the same pattern again and again and again all around the world. You see it in Europe, you see it everywhere. These people were worldwide. They weren't just staying in one country. They didn't have nat national borders. They went everywhere. Well, you know me, it's Charles again, as in all those videos. And I'm here in Ohio with Heidi Jones, my camera woman, <laughs> who has been filming incredible stuff today because this is so exciting just to be here at Serpent Mound, Ohio. This is a dream come true. And you know the archaeologists, they look at this site, they seal off this site, they say this is an amazing site. But just driving up here, the whole area is an incredible sacred landscape. They only put these things, these ancient monuments, in sacred landscapes. In this case, the Serpent Mound, a huge snake. But it's got a history. It's carved out the whole landscape. If you come over here, Heidi, just, just, just come and stand over here. And if we look over there, the ancients would have thought that the whole, well, they would have told their children that the whole landscape was carved out by the cosmic serpent. Over time, this child's story becomes almost like a religion. And they build this as a memento. And this was worldwide. This was not just in one place. This was everywhere. Now, they say this whole area is possibly, possibly, 300 BC, that's what they used to think, then they said it was 1000 AD, now they're saying it's about 300 BC again. No, this would be the third millennium BC, this would be way earlier, way before anything we can understand, because that is the time when these things were built in Europe. It is like the Avebury Serpent, it's on a hill, we were expecting it to be on a hill today, and it hasn't disappointed. The archaeologists themselves know nothing about lee lines, they won't talk about them, they talk about this area. But look, the sacred landscape continues. It goes up to that pyramid-shaped hill off in the distance.
This culture that built this place, we don't know who they were. They call this the Adena culture, but let's face it, this is the same culture, the same worldwide culture that built this sort of monument everywhere. In A3 in England, there was one in New South Wales. It's been obliterated by farmers in the 20th century, as late as the 1940s. There was a snake on a hill, a snake-shaped top of a hill, and there were stones on top. And that has all been absolutely obliterated and destroyed. This was going to be destroyed as well. I just read on a plaque over there. But it's saved thanks to some archaeologists in, in 1885 and that's the time when stone circles everywhere were being absolutely obliterated. Now, if we go for a little walk, just follow after me. Come this way, Heidi, please. This way, Heidi, please. <laughs> My great photographer. Let's go over here, shall we? And we follow this mound. Look at this mound. This is extraordinary. This is unbelievable. I mean, what is going on here? And just look at this view here. Look at that view of the mound. It just snakes right down. It goes towards the west. It changes it, its mind, and then it it, it 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 goes north. Sorry, it changes its mind. Then it goes off to the west. It is heading towards the setting sun. It is following the warmth. It's almost come from the setting sun as well, and it's twirled around to the north. Then it's decided to change its mind. Now we can't get into the minds of the people who created this, but. We can just interpolate and we can guess and we can sort of see what they were thinking. Hello, this place isn't just laid out by accident. It's not just one snake which has been randomly plonked on the hill. We know that each of these curves here, each of these, there would have been some ritual group standing inside and they would have been facing certain things. For example, this curve here faces the minimum northern moon set. There's a summer solstice. There's a winter solstice. There are lunar standstills. There are equinoxes. We can see the compass directions. And I think what the archeologists are not saying is this would have been used for ritual education. It takes many months for a druid, a wizard to learn his craft. They would have had to come here at the end of each set of lessons, at the end of each term, and they would have been forced or compelled to watch the astronomical phenomena at work. That's why we're on top of a hill, for astronomy reasons. And after each lesson, they would have progressed to the next stage. That's why it's all linked together like a snake. To the next lesson, the next lesson, the next one, the next one, the next one. Until they finish the serpent and then they are classified a wizard. That's what this place is for. It must be. Each one of these is a ritual area for a different ceremony. And it would not have been just ordinary people coming here. They were busy with their farms. This was for priests, for the elite. We have no idea about this culture. This culture, you know, this could be 3000 BC. It could be earlier. I don't believe that thing about it being 300 BC. No, it's earlier than that. But it was fixed up over time. It was modified. It was changed. We have to allow for that. But to find the original time, I think we should be looking at the third millennium BC, just when things like Glastonbury were being built. Glastonbury Tall was being carved. Avery, 3000 BC. There you go. All right. Ka well, we're about three quarters down the serpent now. We were up there before where I was talking, and now we've walked down. There's a huge metal viewing platform up there. We're past the solstices, and we're heading towards the head. This is actually the mouth of the serpent right here. This is the mouth. And Heidi Jones, my camera woman, if you could please lift up the camera so we can see the mouth. And it's holding a cosmic egg. That is absolutely incredible. That is unbelievable. There is a cosmic egg here and it, it, it's sort of eating the cosmic egg. Is it eating the setting sun? There's a setting sun over there. It's, it's facing due west when it just lurches off a cliff. And if we, go, if we walk down there, as we're going to do, you see there's a massive cliff and you see the same thing at Windsor Castle. Windsor Castle would have been a sacred hill. You go behind Windsor Castle, there's a, there's a mound on top of a hill just like this is a mound on top of a hill with a cliff behind it. And you can see this enormous cliff below you at, at that place and at this place as well. And you think, how did they do this? Why did they choose this place? And then there's the energy. The energy of this place is just serene. It's unbelievable. I've never experienced anything like this. It's just peaceful. This is a dragon hill. The snake is the dragon. And there are more of these hills all around the world. These are dragon chakras. For example, in Poland, Wawel Castle. It's a dragon chakra. 
just like this there's there's some but over there there's some unsettling energy about the place here it's just different here it's just peaceful it's amazing every ancient place is different some places like stonehenge there's this foreboding feeling this this feeling that something wants to wake up something's about to happen but it's not that nothing's happening here it's this peace it's the snakes has been laid down and that's it it's traveling down the mountain it's eating the sun I'm sure if, if people look into this, there'll, there'll be myths about the snake eating the sun. That, that looks like what's going on here. I'm not sure if that's a sunset or if it's a cosmic egg down there, but it, it's absolutely incredible. I mean, okay, cut. This is the start of the serpent mine here behind me. And it just continues off and it curves. It heads towards the north and then it changes direction. Follow me, it heads over here to the west. And it heads to that pyramid over there, right on the horizon. That's where it points. It goes all the way down. Now, this was... And if you look over there, it's, as it is everywhere, a hill, a plateau on the edge of a cliff, and a huge, beautiful view off into the distance towards a pyramid. And that's where the lee line continues. The serpent itself, it starts over here. I'm not allowed to walk on this this is pretty soft it's muddy but it spirals here this is its coiled tail it goes off towards that metal structure that viewing platform it turns towards the north and then finally again towards the west and yeah it points that lee line it wants to continue it's pointing towards the setting sun we don't know what's going on but it's incredibly ancient Standing at the end of a snake, what's this here? The summer solstice sunset. We're facing almost due west. And if you look at this snake over here, that was the cosmic egg I was talking about. Over here, I don't know what this is. This could be a burial mound or something. The egg, it looks more like a lozenge or something. Who knows what's going on with that? That's a bit odd. That's weird. We've seen the mouth, we've moved down from the mouth. And if we go over here, the archaeologists don't talk about this, but if you actually walk over here, and you walk down these steps this way down these steps we're on the edge of a huge cliff what's going on this is absolutely unbelievable if we look down there this is there is a river just like windsor castle avebury stonehenge all these ancient sites they have a river down below. Just look at that river all the way down there. I don't know if that'll come out. Who knows, we'll see. Uh, but, oh, this is amazing. That is the sacred river. So we have, as above, so below, we have a snake on the hill, a snake in river down the valley, and something the archeologists will never ever talk about in one million years. Of course, it's lee lines. The snake is facing that pyramid on the hill. I'm not sure if it's possible to zoom in a little. That might be difficult. But it's, uh, it, it's, it's just behind that tree. And there is another pyramid off in the distance. No doubt it's private property. So we'll never, we will never know, you know. The archaeologists are going to say, you know, that's a different site. But no, it's all the same site. For 10 kilometers, 20 kilometers, 30 kilometers around here, the landscape is absolutely beautiful, just like the landscape is beautiful around Avebury, beautiful around Stonehenge. It's just marvelous. They placed this cosmic serpent here in the center of the sacred landscape to symbolize all the myths they grew up with for possibly tens of thousands of years. These were worldwide myths. If you look at the Viking tales, if you look at the, the ancient tales from China and India, 
you'll see exactly, you'll see, if you look at those fairy tales, you'll see representations of what is depicted here, a cosmic serpent. This is one of the oldest religions of mankind. While we're here at Serpent Mound, I'm Charles, you know me from the other videos, and this is Heidi Jones, my camerawoman. Chuck Jones, Heidi Jones. Say hello, Heidi. Hello. Awesome. Now, down there is the Serpent Mound. You can probably see if you just lift the camera up a bit. But that's not a sacred part of this hill. The most sacred part of the hill is the part which is closest to God. It's up here. We are on top of the hill here and there is a beautiful view of the surrounding countryside. There must be, must have been something amazing over here. And it was destroyed perhaps a hundred years ago, perhaps a thousand years ago, perhaps five thousand years ago. Over there, I'm not sure how well the camera will pick it up, is a barrow, a burial mound. They did the same thing in Europe. It's unbelievable. The same religion here in America, in the New World. We call it the New World because we only just discovered it 500 years ago. Really? This was discovered and rediscovered and rediscovered thousands of times by thousands of sea voyages and peoples. Go ahead. Well, this just seems to be the main barrow here in this park and there are two more lesser ones. This seems to be the main pyramid. Now there's an old religion of the earth god being thrust into the earth. Falling from heaven, he's buried in the earth. This could be the burial of the god and elsewhere we have the burials of the humans nearby because this is the main one, it's like the main pyramid. I'm not sure if the burial was found here or not. Even if it was, it could have been an intrusive burial. If we look at over here to the car park, well, there would have been more here or on top of the hill. If you go to Ireland, you see these burials on top of hills wherever you go. And it's just the same religion here. It's, it's just the same thing. Now, if we walk around... Well, the Serpent Mound, this is the origin. This is the coiled snake. It starts in the middle and it coils outward and as you see it coils outward here and it goes all the way around here right up there right around coiling towards the setting sun well we're waiting for the solstice sunset we're about a month out of solstice but the sun is basically in alignment now we're at the head just a feature of this head it may have been a much larger head because you have this mound here and who knows what it is who knows what's going on it could have been just a huge head and another culture has come and decided to carve a cosmic egg here we don't know now if you look at my shadow if you look at Heidi's shadow what's going on they're facing into the body of the serpent it is looking into the heat of the summer solstice sun this snake is heat seeking and if we look over here, we can see what's going on. There are nubs on the horizon, mountains. And this is the solstice sunset. Cut. Now I've been pretty conventional so far, but while we're on the subject of fallen angels, a fallen serpent, they've decided to lash it onto this hill and it's chasing after that solstice sun. What about a, a, a massive event? We are inside a four mile wide crater. 250 million years ago, something fell down here, or it was a, a massive volcano a crater or something. But the universe itself, physicists are increasingly realize, realizing, is stacked information, layered information. The universe has retained this information and somehow passed it to mankind, who has decided to make America's best cosmic serpent here. People say that comets are cosmic serpents. What exactly is going on? Are we able to somehow access the information, that stacked information in the universe, for our own means, for our own intelligence? Who knows? Okay. 
in the Buddhist tradition, in the Asian traditions, there was a cosmic egg. The world was created by thought, or the egg was created by thought, or something was created by thought. The egg hatches. A stone monkey pops out. This monkey is basically the devil. He's some kind of chimpanzee. He's screeching. He's crazy. And here we have a cosmic egg as well, which gives birth, which gives birth every year at the summer solstice. It's ripening the crop. The crop will be ready for harvest when the time comes. Now this stone monkey, he's basically associated with Satan. He was thrown out of heaven. He is the fallen angel. And the fallen angel is also a serpent. Now we are on top of a mountain here. Lightning strikes have the appearance of a serpent falling from heaven, shooting down. This mountain might have been struck many, many times in its history. We don't know, but if that was observed, they thought this is the place to put a cosmic serpent. And in addition, if that is a cosmic egg back there, that circular feature, this is the egg. There's a snake with its jaws. This could be where Yggdrasil was. Alternately, the snake is wrapping around the mountain. There could have been an Yggdrasil in the middle. Just the same as in Germanic mythology. This is where initiates would have began their education. They would have been brought here at a time like this, a propitious time to see the solstice sunset. We're at the tail of the serpent. As they progressed through each teaching, each piece of knowledge, they advanced and there was another ritual throughout the snake's body until they reached the head, where at the head the mystery which would be revealed would be the same view. Essentially because the first is the last, as they say in ancient doctrines. That's a deeply ancient statement. It's just to show that the circle is complete. The cycle is complete. The life cycle is complete. The cycle of teaching is complete. I think that's what was going on here.